Hey there, I'm Dan Wolf and we are at Crankworks. I'm gonna be taking a look at some of the most interesting bikes in and around the pits. Let's go find them now. This is probably the most interesting bike you'll see all weekend. Um, I'm here with Mick Williams himself from WRP and Trinity and he is going to go through this entire bike head to toe, which may take several minutes and uh, I think it's gonna be incredibly interesting. Uh, what do you want to talk about first? <laughs> Man, I don't even know where to start. I mean, it's been a culmination of years from like on a WRP side, but also a Trinity side, so. You've had how many iterations of the front and rear end? Well, this is V5, so this okay. has got a stamp in the, in the head tube V5s. I think just this entire bike is so, so unique. There's a fair bit going on, Have yeah. you found the bikes quieter now because of a gearbox? Oh, or yeah. corners better because your weight's centralized? I mean, all of the above, even like I feel jumping is quite nice. I mean, sometimes it can be harder to crack a fat whip because okay. you've got like a lot of weight between your legs. But it's much um, more but stable? It's much more stable. Yeah, much, much more stable. Okay. I think um, by having a tensioner on an unsprung member, yep. that tension is just going wild. Whereas as soon as the, the tensioner is off the mainframe, which is a sprung member, okay. is now all the, the tensioner is doing is actually taking the tension of the chain growth of the chain. It's not interrupted just by the okay. movement of the rear wheel going up and down, if oh, that wow. makes sense. So the main thing I noticed, to be honest with you, was just how quiet the chain was because it was tensioned off the mainframe. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's it's those one percenters that all kind of add up. There was a bit of work that went in, like for example, I mean, you can see it from the angle we're at, but like yeah. that point there, like the center of where the cassette sits is yes. exactly 165 mil. So it's like- Yeah, I was if, just gonna ask about crank length and then I noticed like the straight through the pedal axis just goes yeah. in through. Yeah, so, so in, in theory, it's perfectly balanced. I think we could talk about this bike for yeah, honestly a few yeah. hours yeah. and maybe we'll continue to talk after this, yeah, but uh, thank love, you very, very chat. much. Anytime. Welcome to the Yeti tent. I'm here with Kashi, an ex-Olympic XC rider and also the current distributor for Yeti bikes here in New Zealand. The perfect man to go through Yeti's new ASR XC bike. I mean, it's it's so exciting for me, yeah, to see an XC bike back in the range. It's yep. been a while. This is designed for World Cup level racing. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of the new breed of XC. It's 115 rear, 120 front. It's a rocket machine. It's <laughs> absolutely awesome. I absolutely love this lockout system. Mm -hmm. When you when you turn the dial up here, yep. so it, it locks the front and rear through the grip shift lockout. Brilliant. And it, it's so remarkable. It does well front it and rear instantly at the same time. Like exactly. Okay, brilliant. And, and it's so quick and easy to use. And I'm just looking at the details. I mean, like everything is being considered. The top guide yeah. here is so clean. You've got yeah. UDH, which you can't have a bike release nowadays yeah. without UDH. So full T-type, yeah. yeah. beautiful CNC link here. Yeah. So this is nearly like coming at XC with yeah. all your experience, but now with fresh eyes. Yeah, it, have they surprised you? Well, it, it makes me want to ride XC again. Okay. That, that's the biggest thing about it. It's just yeah. like, I got on it and I was like, this is fun. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Well, will we see you back at the races again? At low key ones. <laughs> okay, so next up we got Mr. Hatterer, Mikey himself. Mikey, we have a really special bike here today. Can you go through, first of all, what Zero is to you and to Road Ruin New Zealand? And yeah, this is uh, this is actually a as close to a home built or a home brewed bike for this forest as anything else will ever be. Zero is originally here from Rotorua. It was uh, Rob Metz and uh, and Dodzi were the founders of the company. Wow. Dodzi uh, unfortunately passed away in a hunting accident a few years back and. Uh, but Rob continued on doing the engineering, and this is his first uh, trail bike, born and bred in the Fakawetawetu Forest. Wow. And appropriately named, this is the uh, Zero Tanifa. I've already forgotten, what do you call it? Mikey's Mods. Yeah, okay. yeah, but I'm a tinkerer, yeah. so no, I did a couple little mods, uh, added some stiffness to the frame here and there, uh, made, a, made some mods to the shock mount so I can run metric. You actually slightly modded the frame with extra layers of carbon. Yeah, so, so I, I, yeah. I yeah added a few layers of carbon to to the, kind of the bottom bracket area just yeah. to stiffen it up for corners. Like I I'm Lidl. kind of a big big yeah. guy when I throw my weight into a corner. Yep. Um, and I've also got kind of short legs, so I actually modified the seat tube a bit. Took about 40 mil off the top. And then onto this paint job, which I know you just touched on, but you fully did this like start to finish. Yeah, yeah. No, That's stripped amazing. it down. It was uh, it was that really cool kind of tennis ball yellow frame yeah, that they I had for it. years. And uh, everybody loved that neon color, but it, I think it was time. And I, yeah. and I wanted to do some of those uh, modifications to the frame. Nice winter project. And then tell me, so you had a non-metric before, so have you you created a new... Yeah, I just kind of modified the shock length. Like, or did you actually, like, what, which uh, way did you modify it? The front shock mount. Okay. Yeah, it took, took a bit, I think the stock length was 216 and metric yeah. is 230. Yeah, yeah. But the stroke is only two mils difference. 
Oh, man. So yeah. it basically works out. And because I knew I was going to mullet the bike as well, I kind of moved the shock mount a little bit to yeah. steepen up the seat tuba hair. And so you're like a bike wizard. Uh, yeah, something like that. Maybe, maybe a little bit more of like an alchemist. <laughs> yeah. Unreal. You are an absolute legend. <laughs> Thanks for having me, boys. And, uh, good luck in your race today. Thanks. I'm going to need it. There's some yeah. fast boys out here. Next up, we got Mick Hanna, the legend. We've got his Air DH bike. Mick, can you tell us what size frame this is, model, and we'll just jump into it from there? Yeah, this is a large uh, Yeti SB160. Not the bike I usually run, but for Air DH, this is perfect. You've had multiple podiums over the years. You've won second, thirds. I followed you down here four years ago. Did a few runs with it and blew my mind. I have one question. Crank length, have you started going shorter and shorter? Are you on that bandwagon as well? On this bike, I haven't done anything special okay. for the cranks. Um, but yeah, generally, like on the e-bike, on yeah. my downhill bike, I've had short cranks for like 11 or 12 years now. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you are the bandwagon. You're like, yeah. you predated actually. Trace and I kind of constructed the bandwagon. Yeah. Wow, wow. It's a nice <laughs> yeah. wagon. <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. before we wrap it up, is there anything else you want to finish up on about the bike or even me as a person? Would you like to tell everyone about our friendship? Or yeah. Just yeah. anything, please, please. Yeah, I love you, Dan. Yes. We've had... Been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's Known been a few years. Like. <laughs> All right, we are here with our last bike check of today. This is Ellie, okay? And I'm gonna try attempt to get her surname correct. Who's the boss? Nearly? Who's the boss? <laughs> Ellie's the boss. <laughs> um, Ellie has absolutely blasted onto the circuit this year. She not alone won her category under 19s in DH on the weekend, she also went and won elites. Fastest time of the day at, a, at 16 years of age, and she's now just won junior Air DH. So we got three medals, and we're only halfway through the week. Ellie, um, no pressure, but we go through this bike. Of course. Okay, so we start off with frame name and frame size. All right, so I'm on the trick session. I've got an R1, which is this small bike. Okay. And it's perfect. It's pretty big, small though. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a big wheelbase. Yeah, yeah. Shock setting, because I can see a flip chip here. Um, does that change this, like how high the BB is, or is that a progressive thing? Or Yeah, so I've got it in the progressive, which is the 25%. Okay. That just means that over all the gnarly rough stuff, that it's, it's performing at its best and okay. recovering fast enough for me to <laughs> yeah. keep, keep up my speed, keep okay. going. So you are basically always about speed it's like you don't care as much about jumps it's just going as quick as possible so you want the bike to track and recover up front you got boxers how many tokens are you running i'm running 120 psi with one token okay just because it performs better that okay. way i also noticed on the front of the bike you are running an o-chain which a lot of people don't feel they need to run when it comes to high pivot but i guess you're finding a advantage here yeah well Obviously, I just want the bike to run as best as it can and yep. having the O-chain allows the suspension to work better okay. in all the bumps and yep. makes it perform better under braking as well. Yeah, I'm a big fan of O-chain. I actually run it on all my bikes as well. It's not a plug, it's just the reality. <laughs> I think this is an amazing bike and I can't wait to see what you do this season. Absolutely Thanks killing it. Thank you. Cheers. So that concludes our bike checks here in Crankworks. I hope you enjoyed those steeds. They were pretty diverse. Stay tuned for the next video dropping soon. Bye!